I've been playing guitar for most of my life. I've studied the theory, developed a style, and I even teach people how to play it. But I wanted something more. Something that stimulated my brain in new ways and would require me to stay sharp. It's really hard. And adapt when necessary. And since I play guitar, why not make one? It feels like it's coming together. So what happens when an aspiring guitar player attempts to build his own guitar? This has to work. With zero help? I'm a little scared. And zero experience. I'll save you the trouble. He doesn't stop until it's done. We're going to sit down and figure out everything else that I need to get ready in order to actually construct the guitar. And then we're gonna head to the store and get the pieces that we need. It should be easy. Well, maybe not easy, but it shouldn't be too bad. For this body, I also want to maybe paint it or plasti dip it so it's not just a horrendous piece of plywood. I do actually kind of want it to look good and actually stand out. This is my first time constructing any sort of creation like this, so. Wish me luck. After a couple hours of research and a super simple checklist, I was ready. So for a reference, I'm going to take the single coils out of here and putting them in the new guitar. And also I'm not going to be constructing a neck. I'll just be unbolting this. I wanna to go to a guitar shop and see if I can find a maple neck because I really love maple necks. If not, this is our last resort. It has everything put on it already so I can at least save myself by not being a craftsman. Cut some corners a little bit. I took some time to draw up a prototype for a general reference. And honestly, I had absolutely no clue what I was doing, so I also needed a suitable name. It should work if I do it correctly. If I do it correctly. If you guys are unsure how this is gonna turn out, I'm just as unsure as you are, so. So I have to get screws because I need screws to actually screw into the, the pickup slots on the guitar and then I also need bolts to bolt on the back of the neck. Well, which ones do I need? I don't even think I need that many. <laughs> we also have to figure out what color we actually want the body of the guitar to be. So I'm thinking something kind of like a dark purple and then I'll also paint over it and do little detailed designs. So we'll do this, purple body, love purple, why not? Sanding paper to sand down all of the divots for the body of the guitar. I'm gonna use for the, the actual like body of the guitar. I got one that's a little bit thicker so I'd be able to actually construct the little base holes for the pickups as well as route one outside for the output jack of it. So I'm hoping that this one works. Hey boss, can I ask you a question real quick? The best way to cut the edges around here to actually shape it and make it circular. Oh. Yeah. What, what would be the best way for me to do that? With not having any sort of carpentry experience, I asked around to get an idea of what tools or machinery would be necessary to carry out this operation. The workers scoured the perimeter, searching for the tool that was going to save my project, but of course, they didn't have it. I can do it from the side, right? Do I have to do it from the top or from the... Like roll it up like from the side. Next, I took a trip to my local guitar center in hopes of finding a cheap maple neck. The only necks they had were a whopping $300, so to not waste my trip, I decided to chat with the guitar tech to better understand what I was getting myself into. He talked to me like I started playing guitar yesterday, so it really wasn't helpful. Like the video if you support equality for all guitar players. Now, day two with working on the project with constructing a guitar. And what I need to do now is I need to measure how big I want the body, how I want the angles to curve, and also really just how I want to shape the overall thing. Went to Home Depot and rented out a saw to use in order to cut the wood. I think it'll be fine. Do I know what I'm doing? No. I'm trying. It's my first time doing it. So hopefully this comes out well. You guys see the final product soon. Tell you things that you don't understand. I think we've finished creating the actual body of the guitar so far. This is what we got. Initially, I wanted to have a little point that came out here and then centered the neck in this area. Getting this piece of machinery to actually cut an insert in the middle of the wood was really difficult. Also don't really think it was capable of doing that. So instead, we're going to flip the shape around and since we have a perfectly straight 
side of the body here. We'll attach the neck here, bolts it on, and from there we can have the bridge, pick up, blah, 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 and I'm hoping it works. Since I couldn't find a maple neck, we're also just going to be using an ebony body, which is the one from my old guitar. We're gonna sand this down right now. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper, which is pretty much enough to practically carve the wood. So I've smoothed out all of the edges, I've smoothed out all of the corners, and I also fixed the little divot that we had in the middle. Now that we at least have this piece of wood done, we're gonna go ahead and spray paint it. And it actually feels like it's coming together. For the design, I really wanted to go with an abstract concept, and one I settled with was this swirl pattern paired with white accents. The texture and soft nature of the swirls resembled clouds, which I began to like more as we came closer to finishing. I wanted a design that forced your eyes to travel across the piece in order to take everything in, and I feel like this did exactly that. To spice it up, I added white splatters all throughout and topped it off with the silhouette of a flowing tree to emphasize the movement. So it's been a few days and the next part that we have to do is extract the neck from this old guitar as well as the bridge and we're going to be applying it to our slab of wood. Honestly, I've been putting this off for a little bit of time because I'm kind of worried. I'm just a little nervous that there's maybe some aspect of it that I didn't take into account or maybe there's some calculations I may have made that could be incorrect. But I'm a little scared. For the past five days, I've been trying to visualize how this is going to come together and just kind of run through everything in my head. Wish me luck because I'm seriously gonna need it. So over a year ago, I tried to change a guitar pickup and that just went horribly wrong. Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. But I can see off the bat that I'm going to have to make a cutout on my slab of wood because I don't have one. I'm really just trying to redeem myself and I really need this to work. This has to work. Next, I needed to figure out how to create inserts in the wood to foster the neck and bridge. After watching a few videos, it seemed like the best option would be to use a router. So I headed to Home Depot, and since they never have the tools I need, I had to get creative. And I thought, why not just chisel the cutouts into the wood? Sounds like a foolproof plan, right? For the past 30 minutes, I've been hammering and trying to chisel this piece of wood as if I'm a caveman that just found out what a hammer is. My progress has kind of slowed down a bit. So what I'm thinking is I have this drill here that I've been using to kind of score it, but the issue is that this drill has a standard bit on it that's used for basic screwing. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run to the store again and I'm going to buy a bit that's a bit more efficient at actually piercing through the wood. Since I already have the grooves and I know exactly where the indentions are gonna be, I'm thinking I can just kind of connect the dots and then just break the pieces off entirely since I need to go through the entire piece of wood. All right, let's do this. Oh, baby. So I've been out here for a couple hours now and just sanding, drilling, and chiseling. I have the cutout part here for the bridge. Of course, 
it doesn't fit. On top of that, I also didn't take into account the thickness of this bridge as it gets further up. All I traced was this beginning part. Even if I managed to get that entire bottom section inside of the wood, I really wouldn't know what to do in order to get that wider part other than drill, chisel, and sand. Also kind of ruined the integrity of the design. I have multiple chips. I just feel like I worked so hard on it and put so many resources into it that I, I need to finish it. I think we're just gonna stop for today, today, today. All right, so it's another day. I just got back from the store. I purchased this jigsaw. We're going to use this to cut out the grooves that I made yesterday. I'm really just hoping that everything today goes as planned. Yesterday was a little rough, had a lot of mishaps, but I'm really hoping we can recover today. And I had to buy another power tool, so I'm hoping this is the last one we have to buy. I'm pretty financially deep in this project, so we have no choice but to make it work. So the cutouts actually turned out pretty well, a lot better than I was expecting. I made the cutout for the bridge a little too large, so we're gonna have some gaps on the top and bottom of it. Since it's a little too big, it'll at least allow me some room to adjust it and make sure that it's straight. What I'm gonna do now is just sand this part out so the neck slides in a little bit better. I'll screw it in, maybe use some wood glue, and we're gonna start the assembly. One of the lights fell and scratched the finish on the Schecter. That sucks. The neck does fit into the slot that I have here, but the issue is that the neck is thicker than my ply of wood. So for a normal guitar, the wood sits in <laughs> the neck actually sits in like this little cavity. So since my ply of wood is a little thin, I'm going to cut a block just the size of the neck, just the cover here, and then screw it in to serve as a base mount. I really didn't address how difficult this part was, but this was seriously more than I bargained for. You would have thought I was in the club the way these screws were stripping. I don't think it'll be an issue. It'll have a little part that actually kind of comes out of the back, but I want to say the worst parts are behind us. This project was a lot more than I intended it to be. So if you guys are watching and you notice that I just all of a sudden got this knot on my head, I was actually really close to the wall when I was grabbing a sweater. I sneezed, my head hit the corner of the wall, and there we go. So today I have scratched the finish on my guitar and I have a knot in my head. I don't think it could be much worse than that. So since the neck was giving me a bit more trouble than I intended, I decided to just go ahead and move on to the bridge. After I screwed it in, I realized it was not straight and it's also not quite parallel to the neck placement. I'm having a few issues with keeping the neck intact. If I can pierce the drill through the part that's close to the bridge, as in past the 23rd or 24th fret on this guitar, then I'm just going to put a bolt straight through that to hold it in place with the wood. If it works, then it saves us a load of trouble. What I decided to do was really just get this guitar neck in here by any means. So what I added was two screws that attach to the wood. They go straight through here just to hold the neck in place so it's not wobbly at all. It holds. <laughs> Funny thing is too, my neck is slanted down and so is the bridge. It works. Trying to remove this back nail. Tried to hammer it in, missed a hammer, and there we are. I think I've caused myself enough harm for today. So I think we're just going to wait until tomorrow. So we're now in the home stretch for finishing this guitar. And the last part that we're left with for this project is my favorite baby, the pickups. So I'm going to be learning how to install pickups and installing them. And this is where things went completely south a year ago when I tried to change my own pickups. But we're here for redemption today. So far, this is the beauty that we've created. It's good. And between learning how to use the machinery to actually produce this output, while also learning how to assemble all of our components, it's been a ride, but I'm here for it. Let's stop wasting time and let's install these pickups. To be honest, I'm not even entirely sure how to get our volume knob, which is which is right here, how to strip that from this base. Oh, I know how to do a lot of things, but wiring electronics just doesn't come easy.
So from the few videos that I've watched, these black wires here are what carries the signal. So I'm gonna strip off these two hot connections to the two tone knobs because we're getting rid of that for our setup. Come on. Oh no! It should be the perfect size for us to place the volume knob through. When I did it from the back, it created a much cleaner hole. I'm going to stick this volume knob into place. Also, put on one of these covers for it from the guitar. Pop it over here. It looks a bit cooler and it gets rid of this scratched wood here. This knob at the top will just really be for novelty. This small piece here isn't gonna go entirely through the wood. So I have to find a method for creating a cavity to hold the output jack that's not putting it entirely through the guitar because that won't work. But it might. Look at that! So what I need to make sure I do is get that output jack in as far as I can so that it can get to this notch here. Activate that. Ah, oh, this is awesome! So another day has gone by, unfortunately. But let me tell you, today is gonna be our last day working on this. All we need to do now is cut out a pickup slot so the pickups can actually sit inside of the body of our guitar. And after that, all we need to do is the wiring. And this bad boy is done. This is it. Today's the day. Today's the day. It sits under the wood a bit more than I would have wanted it to. There's really not too, too much I can do in terms of this. Maybe I'll try to find a cover of some sort. I'm gonna sit down and run through some diagrams just to really ensure that I have a good idea of how this routing path and signal is going to transmit. If I didn't want to actually route my pickups to the volume knob, I could do a direct output straight into the jack and that should still work. One thing that's making this soldering process really difficult is the fact that this iron's pretty dirty, but I'm making it work. Will this connection be perfect and flawless by any means? Not at all. No! The soldering is incredibly messy. Ah, oh, it's supposed to take people like five seconds to solder things, but it takes me 10 minutes. Best one we've done so far. Beautiful. So there's the pickup hot wire here, which is the blue one, going into an input on the volume knob. I have the ground from the pickup going onto the volume pot just at the top. From here, I have the output jack sleeve going into the ground on the volume pot. And then from a volume input, that's running into the output jack tip. So we've officially made it to the end of our guitar building journey. And while I wanna say it's been a little bittersweet, this task was absolutely horrible. Not horrible in the sense of it sucked as a project, but there was just so much room for everything to go wrong. Everything that could go wrong, I kid you not went wrong. With that aspect aside, we're gonna plug this bad boy up. But before we do that, I'm going to tell you guys total cost of this entire project so you too can build a quality piece just as I did with only 50 hours. Keep in mind, I don't build. And this is also the largest thing I've built in my life. And our total cost for this project, from the tools to the rentals to the glasses, the sandpaper, everything, is 143 35. You see the headstock here curling up a bit. It's already starting to bow just a smidge. The bridge has also started to tilt up. Only three strings on it. I have the low E and then I have the E and B strings. So the two high strings. I am emotionally prepared for this 
to not work. So the amp that I'm gonna be plugging this into is the Yamaha THR5 that I received not too long ago. Now, this was intended for the cable to go through the front of the guitar and plug in like a standard guitar, but we're gonna have to put it through the back because the cable does not reach all the way through down to the sleeve. It's time. This is YouTube's greatest amateur guitar. No one's gonna top this. I promise. Please don't blow up. Please don't blow up. All right, oh. Okay, okay, is that a no? Oh! There's a signal, I think. Okay, I mean, come on, did we expect it to work? I probably fried, oh! I likely fried the volume pot and also some of the wires because of the way the soldering iron heated up, so I'm, I'm not even surprised. Am I disappointed? Yeah, a little. Yeah. When I touch the coils, there's a little bit of feedback. The pickup insulation did not go as planned. On the bright side, it at least looks like it worked. I figured it would happen. I didn't have a good soldering iron, nor did I have the skills or expertise to even be doing what I was doing, but I tried and that's all that matters, guys. If there's anything that you guys learned from this video, it's that you don't need to spend so much time figuring things out and trying to learn them. Just, just do them. And as cheesy as it sounds, if you actually believe that you can do something, like no matter what it is, and you work really hard to do it, like, I mean, I put in 30 plus hours on this guitar, 30, 40, probably 45 to make it. Hard to believe that not long ago, this was just a big ply of wood. And you guys got to see the entire process. And also, if you want to see what a monfoil signature guitar would look like. Maybe not the cutout, but in terms of the design, I love the abstract nature of things, and I love for them to just look unique and lively. I don't like for things to look too clean or too uniform. I, I absolutely love it. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for checking this out. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting, because this was a roller coaster. But this is the end. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Wow!